time to tantalize your earbuds with creative makers and shakers. It's Creative Living, the podcast with Jane Klaus. Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Klaus. Today's show is going to dive deep into the transformative power of creativity. Creativity isn't just about self-expression. It can be a fulfilling hobby, a side hustle, and also a way to give back and help others. And that reminds me, years ago, I hosted a television series called We Make for Good. It was with the Fairfield Processing Company. I traveled the country meeting incredible people and organizations who dedicated their time and talent to make quilts and pillows and stuffed animals and blankets and other items for those in need. And those people in need included veterans and cancer patients and foster children and domestic violence victims. It was really powerful for me. I mean, just witnessing firsthand how creativity and generosity can change lives was truly inspiring. So my guests today are continuing that mission, changing lives through a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping injured veterans and active duty military through craft therapy. Joining us from Help Heal Veterans, our retired U.S. Navy captain and the CEO of Help Heal Veterans, Joe McLean, and Dr. Keith Stuzzi, a career naval physician and expert in traumatic brain injury, who also works for the Traumatic Brain Injury Center for Excellence. Captain McLean and Dr. Stussy, thank you for joining me today. Hi, Jane. Hey. How are you? Hey, I'm, Jane. I'm so happy you're here. First of all, thank you so much for your service. You were both in the Navy, you're both captains in the Navy. That's correct. Thank you. Uh, seriously, you've done so much to help our country, and all I do is a podcast. So thank you very, very much. <laughs> Let's start here, Captain Joe. You yeah. were in the Navy almost 30 yeah. years, and that included numerous overseas deployments and many leadership roles in and out of the military. You now serve as the CEO of Help Heal Veterans, and that is the organization we're talking about today. Why is it important to you to continue to give back to your country? You know, I think it's, you know, part of being in the service is being part of something bigger than yourself. And a lot of folks do that with our country, be you're a police officer, a teacher, serving your local community and being part of the military makes you part of a certain tribe. And you can never really leave it. I mean, when I left the Navy, I went to work for corporate America for a little bit, uh, working for the beer, beer industry, which is awesome. But, you know, there's something about being part of something bigger than yourself and trying to make a difference and serving those who have given so much for our country. So that call to serve coming came me back to serving for Help Heal Veterans, which is a great organization. You know, we've been around for 53 years. We got our start during the Vietnam War. And our mission is basically creativity to heal the invisible wounds of war. Amazing. And when we talk about the invisible wounds of war, we think about PTSD. And that could really be a 24-7 ordeal for veterans and their families. And, and active military members as well. So when we talk about that PTSD and those lingering effects, Dr. Stussy, two of my favorite subjects, just so you know, is creativity, crafting, and health. So thank you. I'm going to read this, and I, I stole it from something you probably wrote, but the Department of Defense, and you can explain it, the Traumatic Brain Injury Center of Excellence reports that more than 458,000 service members have sustained a traumatic brain injury worldwide since the year 2000. More than 82% have been classified with a mild traumatic brain injury, or TBI, for those people that don't know. Sudden movement can cause the brain to bounce or twist in the skull and cause a chemical change in the brain, disrupting the brain's normal function. So Dr. Stussy, talk about what's happening in the brain when somebody has an injury or a related stress. We think PTSD, concussions, depression, it can cause those lasting effects, but give us a basic idea of what's happening in the brain and then I'll get more specific with you. Yeah, so thanks thanks for having me, Jane. Um, so it, yeah, those numbers are, are pretty incredible. Uh, we have a division within uh, the TBI Center of Excellence that tracks those numbers. And it's pretty amazing when you look at it, the number that have been affected on active duty. And those, by the way, are just first time members. So, you know, those don't even include 
individuals or service members who've had second, third, fourth time concussions or traumatic brain injury. And the majority, like you said, are mild traumatic brain injury. But I caution the audience when they hear that term mild traumatic brain injury, it, in some ways it's almost a misnomer for individuals because while the majority, it's true, are going to recover within a couple of weeks, uh, typically two weeks up to a month, there are some folks who have lingering effects to, uh, of it. And not only that, you mentioned the PTSD portion of it. For me, having served 23 years in the military, a very unique population because not only uh, do you uh, sustain the TBI or the traumatic brain injury, but there's also the mental health aspect of it unlike uh, many times in the civilian world. So, you know, you could imagine uh, uh, I deployed in back in 2010 and 11 and an IED goes off. And so not only does the blast wave affect the brain that I'll talk about in a second, but then their battle buddy dies or loses a limb or something uh, catastrophic happens. So those effects affect the brain also in a negative way that can result potentially with post-traumatic stress or depression or anxiety. So we always have to think about that. And oftentimes the two of those are related, but I won't get too technical uh, uh, with you as far as what happens, but there are chemical changes that are related inside the brain uh, after a traumatic brain injury. And uh, there are chemical shifts with inside the brain uh, on a very minute, uh, uh, on a, what we call an axonal level, there are things that are shifting around. The good news is, as I mentioned earlier, is that those shifts occur, but ultimately things come back to status quo. Um, unfortunately, if those shifts occur and it's you know more uh, significant, then you can have really long-term effects. But like I said, most of the time, those things go back to normal. Where we really start to worry is when people have had one, two, three, four, and then those effects become cumulative on the brain. And so the unfortunate thing is with the mild, in the year 2024, as much as scientists have tried and researchers have looked at it, we don't have a single test that can take a look inside the brain and say, you've had this mild traumatic brain injury, definitively say that you've had it. So we as clinicians have to go by uh, the individual story. We look at symptoms that are associated with it. And most cases we can compare it to a baseline and say, okay, you were this way before. Now you've had this mechanism of injury. You've had either what we call an alteration of consciousness or a loss of consciousness or some type of amnestic effect. And because of that, now you're having symptoms such as headaches or dizziness or visual issues or nausea, whatnot. And so you put those two together and then you get you labeled, okay, now you've had this mild traumatic brain injury. So we're working very hard to determine and to look at, um, you know, diagnoses as far as like, you know, uh, MRIs and other type of uh, very um, unique types of scans of the brain. But as far as the mild categories go, we just haven't gotten there right now. And when you talk about the more moderate and severe, of course, many times those individuals have had more significant brain injuries and you can see those on like a CAT scan or whatnot. Um, so it's still a little bit of a conundrum, uh, but there are changes that, are, that, that we know are happening. It's just trying to image them and really pinpoint what exactly is going on. It's still very, very difficult. And I would imagine too, if it's, you know, you had this injury or this accident and you think I'm okay, or you can't pinpoint what this mild TBI is, maybe perhaps that veteran that's come home doesn't even know that they're suffering from a mild traumatic brain injury. And then it kind of works its way out in other ways in their life. Have, do you see that? Oh, absolutely. And then there's, and then there's you know, we, we talk about the invisible wounds, as you mentioned earlier. And, and to be quite frank, there, uh, at least when I was serving at the height of the war in 2010 and 11, you know, you can't, again, getting back to the fact you can't see it. So, so the battle buddy with them has an amputated leg. That's something you can see. Everyone knows that they got injured. If, if I'm the service member that had the TBI, you can't see anything wrong with me. And quite frankly, we went through a period where the service members were almost ashamed to come to medical. 
And they were like, well, they may think I'm faking it. You know, I'm having issues with concentration and memory and headaches and everything. And they'll, you know, they'll think worse of me if I, if I present to medical. Well, they don't get the treatment. And then, of course, down the road, a year, two years or three years, it's oftentimes the uh, spouse or the relative that sees that they're not, they're just not right. And then, uh, or the command may see that they're just not right. They're not performing as well as they used to. And so oftentimes when I was working on active duty, we would get the command or the spouse would say, hey, can you just check this person out? And then lo and behold, we would talk to them and, and get the real, the real story. And it was, yeah, actually I had, you, you know, two or three concussions. I just never told anyone about it. And so we try to prevent that. And I think culturally in today's military, we've gotten a lot better at identifying and having individuals come forward and tell us about it, but it still is a, a little bit of a problem. And to your point, and with Help Heal Veterans, you know, a lot of the effects that I've seen on the healing aspect of it, it's not just on the individual, the service member, the veteran, but it can be on the family and bringing them closer together. And I think that's one of the, the wonderful things about the kits that we offer and uh, one of the things that, uh, that really can make a difference in the lives of the entire family. Well, and great segue, Dr. Susi. Joe, or Captain McLean, excuse me. Okay. Let's talk about the specific programs that Help Heal Veterans offers to veterans active duty and their families mm -hmm. to address this traumatic brain injury, PTSD, anxiety, stress, motor function even. Talk about the programs. Yeah, so we, like I said, we, we make therapeutic crafts that are uh, help with clinician input to help supplement or complement the uh, treatment they may be getting under a clinician's care. So it's not an, in any way, shape, or form a replacement for that, but we try to make something, a, another tool in the toolbox, either for the therapist, the clinician, the veteran, or the family member to use on their healing journey. So for example, in the track brain injury world, well, it may be that fine motor skills or the ability to concentrate or the ability to sequence, you know, or for a period of time that can be helpful as a step on their healing journey like i like to think that i like to say that uh, when you heal from a tbi or ptsd or you're trying to manage your pain it's a series of small battles like he said it's not like a here's a silver bullet you're better it's going to be a lot of therapy for for some folks and this is one piece of that that can help someone heal up from that i remember a uh, i was at uh an spirit where keith used to work here in, at, in southern california and there was this big uh, hard charge of special operations Marine. And he was there with his, his spouse and he was still a little fragile. Intrepid Spear, by the way, is an awesome program in the military, eight weeks of outpatient. And that's very much a tailored, uh, uh, a tailored uh, set of therapies that apply over a period of time that's unique and tailored to that particular soldier, sailor, airman, and Marine. But he was, it just gets him on that path. But uh, what, what I remember though, is just how fragile he was. And he came up to me, big, big guy, still a little fragile with tears in his eyes, thanking me for one of the kits that we make, which is a wood motorcycle puzzle. And he was just saying what a big difference it made that the fact that he could, he had never thought he could do something like that. He able to complete it, be a little bit more creative. It helped him a lot and it helped him to, to be successful in the other therapy that brought forward because he was successful in this one little tool. So we make a tool to help win these small battles and it's pretty amazing what creativity something so small can do in conjunction with a good therapy from your doctors and therapists. Yeah, and that's a great story. You know, you you talk about this big macho man, this big guy with tears in his eyes because this really made a difference and, and you think, I think a lot of people would go, no, you're not going to do crafts. Like, how does that even help? And so specifically, yeah. you provide therapeutic craft kits, or we can just say yeah. you provide craft kits, all different kinds of craft kits. But Dr. Stussy, question for you. Why is creativity, arts, and crafts maybe a great substitute for medicine or great in addition to medicine? Well, I think that because because it hits, you know, certain parts of the brain and and to be honest, um, at the end of my career, I, I started getting into I helped teach at the Intrepid Spirit that uh, Joe was talking about. I started getting into more complementary medicine uh, areas such as mindfulness. Um, and and I found that, you know, that type of medicine 
it, it, it's just, I think it's in Western medicine, it's really untapped. I mean, we're, we're learning more and more about it. And I think it's, it can be very, very effective. And if you take a look at, you know, craft kits and, and creativity, you're using your brain to do certain things. And there have been multiple studies in the world of art therapy and even, even some in the, in the craft therapy realm that show that, you know, certainly certain parts of the brain almost light up when you do a craft kit or you do art therapy. And that can be very beneficial. It, it, it takes your mind off of what you're worrying about in the case of anxiety. It can have a positive impact on, on the cognition um, Joe talked about even something as simple as a lot of many of the folks who have sustained traumatic brain injury um, can have difficulty following instructions. And our kits provide a range of instructions, very simplistic, all the way up to some of the kits are very, very complex. And so our um, occupational therapists used to use the kits simply to, to as, as a way to get them to follow instructions in a in a regular sequence. And that sometimes then will flow over to other parts of their lives or their activities of daily living. And so I think because it does affect multiple parts of the brain, it can open up certain centers that were previously not opened up. And for me, I think getting back to, you know, I mentioned about the kind of complementary alternative, it really is that extra thing, that extra, you know, something you can add on to uh, to the traditional, more traditional types of therapy. And, you know, unfortunately, as physicians, we're oftentimes, uh, you know, we, we like to name it, blame it, and then tame it with a drug. I, I remember that phrase from one of the complementary alternative, you know, providers I used to work with. And so getting away from that model and getting more towards, here's something that is um, very simple, very effective mm -hmm. um, in my mind. And the stories, as Joe mentioned, we can, you know, countless hundreds of stories from the veterans and I, even active duty folks that have used our kits that, that just get incredible positive results from it. Um, clearly something's working there. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, it's just a very, very good thing, I think. And, you know, we talk about TBI, which is something that I'm very concerned about. Cause I, I just keep knows I have a, a son who works in the Navy who works around explosives a lot. So it's one of the things that's really near and dear to me is this is kind of help him prevent that, you know, that, 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 that those types of injuries. But, you know, one thing the kits are also, when I talk about our kits, like we do about a half million a year. We ship them out all over the world. We ship them to active duty bases, VA medical centers. We ship them to uh, uh, military medical centers, all the way down to small rural health clinics. And when I talk about a VA medical center, it's used by different clinicians different ways. So you may be like it's in the spinal cord injury clinic. It's in the palliative care, which is kind of hospice care. It's in the mental health. It's occupational therapy. It's in rec therapy. Every doctor, clinician, or therapist uses it in different ways. You know, so like our kits are used for like a by our vets, which kind of surprised me for like helping them manage pain, that mindfulness thing that uh, Dr. Stucci talked about. Uh, we hear from our folks who are suffering from substance abuse, that it's that downtime, you know, that uh, makes them want to reach for either that drug or that healer or whatever their, their, that monkey on their back is. And doing a craft kit or something like that, the creative will help that, that feeling start to fade. Or for the Keith that talked about uh, before about family bonding, one of the things we hear about is when our when our young Marine soldiers come back from deployment, they're having a hard time reconnecting with their family. But by doing something creative together or kits, all of a sudden they're talking, they're sharing across the kitchen table, and it helps them to kind of reestablish those bonds after being away for six months to a year. So what, what amazes me is just how something so small, such as a creative product, project or the crackers that we kind of make can have make such a big difference in someone's life. It's such a big difference in so many different arenas, really and truly. And, and you mentioned quite a few there. Uh, and Dr. Susie, I, I love the idea that you're open to or, or, or this Western medicine is becoming more open to mindfulness and spirituality and different types of therapy, not just, you know, here, here what did you say? Treat it like name it. To name it, blame it, tame it, right? So yeah. yes. Yeah. Name it, tame it, blame it. And I think it's so important. I, I feel I I hosted a health show for 12 years. And so I, I got to meet a lot of doctors and do great work with with doctors that that 
treat patients with TBIs. And it was always interesting to me to just see that door open a little bit more into these therapies, into mindfulness, into spirituality, because it does all come into play. And so I think that's that's a fantastic way to look at it and, and start being more open to how can we help you rather than just treat you with medicine. Uh, Captain McLean, you mentioned that you collaborate with community centers and VA hospitals and mm -hmm. other healthcare organizations. And does it happen? Can you treat people at home if they have someone coming in? And yeah. then is it is there a insurance process to it? Are there any you know challenges you face when trying to get these kits out there to help others? Because this is an important thing. It is, but I think what you're uh, one thing to remember is that maybe I should have mentioned is that we are a nonprofit. So we manufacture about 75% of our kits. They're made from some of them, a lot of make from upcycled materials. We make everything from like you're talking about your classic paint by numbers to uh, to wallets to bags to clocks to wood models. We have a facility here in Winchester. We can make quite a bit of stuff, which is pretty good value for the donor dollar. But we do not. We give all this away for free, and it's provided by. Uh, the generosity of our donors. We don't get any government grants or anything like that. It's all small individual donors, some of whom have been given us for like my oldest donor has been given us to over 40 years. We've been for 53. The average donor has been giving us for 18 to 20 years. So we have people who are truly committed for a long time to helping our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and now the Space Force <laughs> heal <laughs> from those uh, invisible wounds of war. But uh, we do, to answer your question, we do have a, uh, what we call a PHR program. It's a uh, uh, patient home rehab. And this is very big into rural health. We have a lot of older vets, Vietnam guys, maybe a few Korea guys still left who uh, don't, either can't or unable to get to the VA. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is that and they, they can sign up on our website. There's a really short uh, type of a sign up project process, and we will send them a number of kits either every quarter or uh, every month, every annually. It depends upon what the, the funding looks like to help them with their own journey. And this kind of helps them kind of, uh, in a way, almost self-medicate in a healthy way uh, yeah. until they can hopefully, and we encourage them to seek out help through their local doctor. And we'll include uh, suicide awareness material from the VA, mindfulness of stuff that Dr. Stucci has provided us, all types of stuff to help them in their healing journey, uh, you know, in case they're they're not unable to get to get that care. But we do about a half million kids a year. And we give it away for free, and we only, and basically, we survive by donations, like any nonprofit. And so, do you want to mention some of those big donors that have been around for thirty years, eighteen years, the big ones? I I don't have their names in front of me because they're all small individual folks. Oh. I will mention Billy, who's been around for a while. Well, I, I thought I thought it would watching be, out there. I thought it would be a manufacturer or oh, a company no. that would be no. done with some of the items they have on the shelf and their yeah. overruns and they give those to you. But th these are really individuals that are stepping up. It is. It is. Well, we've gotten some great support from like Plaid, Joanne. We're talking to Michaels right now for things like that uh, to give us. We have a great relationship with Southwest Airlines that when we upcycle a lot of the airline seats, which we will use that in place of leather for making our wallets, some of the inserts. We make a great messenger bag, which I don't think I have. But anyway, I'll, I'll show you some pictures of that. You can see yeah. that uh, wood kits out of laser. So, yeah, a lot of stuff we make is uh, mostly we make ourselves. But what's great also about the industry, is, for example, we we can design craft kits from the ground up. So if like, say, Joanne's has got some templates and Plaid has got maybe some paint they've got left over, you know, and Michael's has got maybe a little bit of this. We could take all that Frankenstein stuff up together and make it something really creative, help people to creatively express themselves. Like we have a messenger bag. Well, here's some templates to make it a little bit better, to uh, take it, go beyond the craft kit, which is what we find truly to be healing is, yeah, we have instructions, you follow it, but like anything else, there's an opportunity to express yourself and that makes it even more therapeutic when you can express real creativity. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And again, you're working on the puzzle. How am I going to put this together? And sure, you have the you have the notes, but I'm going to do it my way. And that takes your mind off of what you're thinking. Exactly. Um, it's a process. So you get one kit. You do a little craft therapy, a little art therapy. Mm -hmm. You're not it's not a quick fix, I would imagine. So as you're seeing the improvement in cognitive function and motor skills, Dr. Susie, how long does, is this a lifelong process? Have you seen 
improvement after one session of crafting? You know, I think in some cases you can, and, and especially, especially when it comes to, um, I think, the, the motor aspect of it. I think one of, the, one of the coolest cases and one of the most impressive cases I saw, uh, we have a storefront, we call them, uh, in Chicago that's uh, located right next to one of the largest VAs in the country there. And uh, I, I met a gentleman who had had a stroke. And of course, that involves the, the fine motor. It was in mainly in his hand and in his arm. And, you know, the individual was seeing a, a therapist and had, had gotten to a point, was doing pretty well, but had kind of plateaued. And so uh, their uh, specialist had sent him over uh, to start doing some rehab uh, with, with the kits. And, you know, he told me, he said it was absolutely amazing just after the one session, and I forget which kit he was making, but you can imagine by using his hands, doing fine motor stuff, um, I believe, Joe, it was a, a moccasin. Uh, we have these mm -hmm. moccasin kits where yeah. you have to actually have to take the, you know, the thread and with the needle and push it, put it through. But, you know, just by doing that, um, that the motion of that, um, he felt significantly better and he felt that his hands were working better. So, of course, right there, now you've got buy-in. And, and this gentleman kept coming back over and over. And, um, and so, so I think in that sense, you may see some results. But I, I really do believe that it is a repetitive type thing. Yeah. One of the things, if I could just comment on, that kind of brings brings something up for me. The program that Joe talked about, the PHR, I think is really important because there are individuals who are by themselves and they're at home and they can't get out. So I think that's really valuable. But at the, the majority of things that we do are at the VA centers or the storefronts that I talked about or other community centers. I did. I was a sports medicine specialist, and so I saw a lot of injuries. And, and we had training centers, or you know, training rooms. And in 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 my world, we used to call it, call it crosstalk, right? So you get four or five uh, injured service members, and they sit there on the table getting getting uh, treatments. And they say, "Hey, what'd you do to your ankle? Oh, you did this." And that person would talk about it. And then the other guy hurt his knee. And pretty soon, they're all talking to each other. And quite frankly, uh, there's therapy associated with that, that they open up and they tell about their uh, what's happened. The same thing happens when you get four, five, 10 individuals in a room, they're all doing our craft kits. To me, that is, is seriously powerful stuff. And so to have individuals together and just the fact that they're talking together, they're opening up, you know, uh, related to mental health issues, Oftentimes they're isolated. They don't get an opportunity to do that at home. So just that in and of itself, I believe, is one of the other beneficial kind of secondary effects that occurs when you're doing these. And so when you talk about instant effects, sure, there may be some associated with it, but it's that sustained. And those are the folks who just keep coming back. And then, of course, their mental health gets better. Then their, a lot of their physical stuff will get better because they're using their hands and the fine motor type stuff over and over. So, again, as I like to say, it's all good. So It's all good. It's, I love the idea of crosstalk, too, because now you're learning from, you know, a like-minded person. You're learning from your community. And that crosstalk, the ability to have that really is all good, as you say, is art therapy and craft therapy better than any of the other therapies available? Or would you say, you know what, if you're doing art, maybe you'd like music, or if you're doing this, maybe you'd like fitness. Um, does it compare at all? You know, I, I, that's a great question. I, I, I don't know if I have the, uh, the, the, the exact answer for that. I think that you know, it's like as you if you're into fitness, it's like, you know, and I used to do sports medicine, people would say, what's the best exercise to do? And it, it's the one that you enjoy. And I would suspect that for all these different types of, uh, you know, therapeutic things with it, whether it be art therapy or music therapy or craft therapy or whatnot, it's, it's the one that you enjoy. And I think just by exploring any one of them is going to be beneficial. And I found patients or service members when I was on active duty, you know, we, we want to offer the greatest amount of things. And if it's, if they go do Tai Chi and they find out that that's, that suddenly they love it. And that's the one thing they love. Fantastic. Uh, they do art therapy. They never thought they'd be into art. And they say, no, that's not for me. 
But then we have a music therapist next door and they start saying, you know, I've never played a guitar, but all of a sudden I pick up a guitar and my mental health has gotten, you know, 80% better. Well, then you stick to that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if anyone's really done a, a great study looking at which one is better. I think it's whatever one suits your needs and gives you the most fulfillment is clearly going to be the best one yeah. for you. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think also what's kind of unique about our kids is that they're kind of self-contained. So you don't need a therapist or a music teacher. But Keith is, is right on. We do not push our product to everybody. We provide a tool. And we, we we have a screwdriver. If you need a hammer, like Keith Point, pick up the hammer. You know, go fly fishing. Get a dog. You know, you know whatever it is that kind of helps you in that, that, that healing journey. But we do make something that I think that's accessible, that's self-contained, that you can do, that it can be almost a starter into maybe taking more steps to express yourself creatively, cre creatively, and then also to maybe heal up for whatever your problems might be. I, I kind of asked this more specifically to individuals, but is there any way to measure the success of the organization, Help Heal Veterans, mm -hmm. as you look at the amount of community centers and VA hospitals and therapists that are using the kits that you provide? Yeah, I think there is, because like basically, for one thing, our demand only goes up. <laughs> so we do not aggressively advertise what we do. We do somewhat, like the VA knows parts of the military and the collision side. But I, I know that if we were to aggressively advertise, our demand would triple. And that's and that's conservative. You know, there's a lot of folks out there who would want to take advantage of what we able to, we're able to do. For me, as a CEO of, of Help Heal Veterans, my job is not about us, it's about the people that we serve and our donors. Our donors are not giving help heal veterans. Our donors are trying to make an impact to the, the that sailor, soldier, airman, marine, coast guardsman, and whatnot like that. And our job is to provide the best creative tool we can so that person can help heal and make an impact in their lives. And you know, if you I think I shared with you, Jane, some of the numbers we had as far as like the percentage of, of an informal survey that actually uh, Dr. Stussy helped design about four or five years ago, where we got some, some incredible numbers of, of like 75% of you said they had TBI, had a TBI said it helped. 97% said it helped with pain management, 70% better. You know, 90 some odd percent said it helped with their PTSD. You know, in the high 90s also said it helped them bond with their families. So to me, that's kind of the, the magic there, that the, the proof point that is helping because our folks say that it helps and they want more. Yeah, absolutely. And I ha I love those numbers. I love the data, but I think I like the idea of it more because you both yeah. have hundreds of stories mm -hmm. on the success of veterans and uh, military members that are using it, and even families that you could tell us. Is there any story, and you gave us a couple, but any that come to mind, either one of you that you want to share that it was maybe yeah. just recent? Yeah, I'll, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. One, uh, and this is, I, I can, don't, don't get me going. I can tell stories <laughs> kind of all day. But I, I remember my very first day on the job and we get thank you letters from veterans. And one of the first letters I opened was, thanks so much for what you do. I don't think about suicide as much any, anymore. You know, oh. you know, and that was just cut to that series of small battles that doing, and it th wasn't that, okay, this saved my life, but this was one of those tools that kind of helped me heal up. I remember being in a VA hospital, and I'm not sure if the Dr. Susie was there or not, but we visited a, a young woman who was in, in palliative care. And she was in the VA. She was not probably never going to leave the hospital. And she was using our birdhouse kits that she would make and create to leave in the gardens there in the hospital because she wanted to leave a little piece of herself behind. You know, and we were all like, obviously, just crying because it, made, it helped her in that acceptance of what she thought her future might look like, you know, going through there. I get thank you cards from caregivers, part of, you know, someone who's maybe undergoing uh, a problem where they're at home a lot, be they're older or they're, you know, or whatnot, uh, is their caregiver. And the caregiver wrote me a note thanking me for the kits because it gave her husband an hour and a half of something that he could do while she took a nap, took a little break kind of a thing. And then I'll, I'll share, I keep on going, but I'll, I'll share one I mean, that I- It's life-changing. What what you do to help others is life-changing, yeah, really, is. truly. And just hearing it, I, I'm getting like goosebumps because I know how important it is and we don't think about it. Yeah, I'll share one more that was was a complete surprise to me because I'm a guy, okay, obviously. But uh, there is a, a female veteran 
who was in an abusive relationship and she had just left and she was in a, uh, uh, a domiciliary, I'll say that. And she was afraid to leave and she wanted something to do to help her manage the stress because she didn't want to step out. So she wrote and asked us for some projects, which we were able to send to her, you know, and, you know, just be so she could help deal with this very stressful time in her life gone forward. And I promise that I'll take one more. And there's this, uh, you know, the opioid epidemic. We have a paraplegic vet close by who uh, does not like what the opioids do to his body. He's in chronic pain. And he'll get up in the middle of the night and do something creative, be it a craft kit. And after a while, that sense of pain will fade for a time is what he's told us about. So I'm sorry, I'm getting, I'll get off my soapbox. I'll turn it over to Dr. Stacy. <laughs> And, and, you know, we, we talked a little bit about like on the battlefield or when you're when you're deployed and somebody is injured and somebody loses a limb next to you and you have PTSD. And Dr. Stussy, you talked about it at the very beginning of our conversation. I feel like sometimes, too, it's almost or this person that you were just talking about, Captain McLean, it's almost like I, I'm I'm too tough. I'm too tough to to not take my medicine or I'm too tough to tell you that something's happened. But when you finally get there and you you receive and you're open to receiving that help and you feel the difference, you know, it's just that mentality you have to the, the awareness of what you're doing is so important. And and that's what I'm trying to get at. You know, you think oh, I'm, I'm tough. I don't have any problems. But you need help. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, a lot of these guys and some gals too, obviously, that it's breaking those barriers down. And I think that to Joe's point, having our kits available and, and trying to get them out to as many folks as we can is just vitally important because, you know, if you don't have the tool in front of you, you can't use it. Right. And so, um, you know, my experience while on active duty working at one of these intrepid spirit centers down at Camp Pendleton, our therapists had them at the ready. And again, it was one tool that they would use, but just if, if, you know, you give it a shot and if the individual maybe at first, you know, wasn't, wasn't um, ready to use it or didn't want to potentially. Uh, but then, you know, there are stories where people maybe a month later, they, they say, well, you know, yeah, okay, maybe I'll give it a shot. And then suddenly they, they do it and they find some relief with it. Um, you know, uh, like Joe, you know, I've got lots of stories too. And, and Joe already talked about the family unit, but again, I had a, I had a, um, uh, he was a very high ranking Marine, very tough guy, end of his career, had been through four or five deployments and um, his family situation was horrible. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, they don't know what it's like to be at home because they're more, their life is deployment and they're more used to being deployed than they are. And there's a lot of stuff that goes with it as far as like, you know, the, their, um, um, you know, adrenaline junkies and they're used to being there. So when they get back, they're just, it's just not, um, it's not something they're used to. And, and this gentleman, he had been in therapy and uh, they couldn't, you know, the barriers were tough to break down, but he took one of our kids home and he had uh, uh, two small kids and he sat at the table and I'm going to start crying almost because, you know, for the first time, he said in months, almost years, he 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 shared that kit with his kids and they opened up to him and he opened up to them. And just that one experience, uh, he came back in tears because he said he he hadn't had that shared experience in so long. And so just that one moment in time that we were able to get him to be able to share with his kids was, was to me truly remarkable. Um, and that's really what it's all about. So those type of experiences and moments are, are, um, are incredible. And that's, that's the, that's the thing that, uh, you know, that these provide. So it's really remarkable. It's powerful. Yeah. It's really powerful. The stories that you have to tell Captain McLean, uh, if we want to volunteer, if we want to donate, if we want to help, what do we do? What does everybody yeah. need to do to help, help heal veterans. Well, I think like yeah, you say, donate is great. Obviously we, we are a small nonprofit. We get by on the a generous generosity of individual donors. So I know we have in the creative world, we have a lot of generous people and generous companies. So consider us as you look at uh, making your gifts throughout to helping, uh, to, to helping serve. And, and don't, it's not, you're really just not uh, trying to help, help heal veterans. You're tr you, please help the fix that, that we serve. It's all about our veterans, our active duty, and their families. So please consider that. Creative community, 
you there's some great designers out there. Now, I mentioned before, we manufacture anywhere from 75 80 percent of our kits. Some of you using gift and kind apply there, but we can always use help of skilled designers. We have to make kits at scale. We may get a few pieces and parts. You're not quite sure what to do with them yet, but we do, would love to have uh, you join our community designers and you can uh, learn a little bit more on our website about how to do that. Maybe help us with some designs that uh, maybe not just one off. We have to make thousands of these things. So help us making things to scale. And uh, your creativity would be very helpful because we serve, just like any other, uh, somebody in the creative field, we serve anywhere from that 18-year-old Marine all the way up to that 70, 80, 90-year-old veteran, you know, who's in a senior center. And all genders, urban, rural, all races, all, all, all sexuality, everything. Because a veteran is basically, in you know, active duty is basically part of our American demographics. So helping us make kits that can appeal, that's like more to our female veterans where, where that the population is growing year over year. So trying to make kits that can really be a, appealing to that young active duty uh, sailor or Marine who happens to be female to, to help with warrior resiliency, help them prepare for the stress of combat would be very helpful. And finally, I think just uh, like you say, volunteer, you can find out more about that on our website. Share your stories. You have folks out there who creativity has meant a lot to them. And part of what we try to do, especially on social media sometimes, is to share little stories about how doing something has helped you heal. Because when others can feel that, see that this tool works, they may take a stab at it. So please. Please, please. It's all good. Dr. Stussy, what does creativity mean to you? You know, I think um, creativity is, uh, it's really opening up the mind to, to areas that, uh, that for most people have never been open before. It's, um, it's exploring new uh, facets of, of the brain that, uh, that haven't been explored in most cases. I just think um, in, in our population specifically, I mean, I'm sure in your world and you do podcasts and related to arts and crafts and creativity, you see this all the time, but I find it amazing that in our population with the active duty and even the veterans, that um, there are creative people out there, but most of them have not been exposed to creativity itself and using the brain in different manners than they're typically used to. And so I think, um, I think it gets into, as you mentioned before, the mindfulness aspect of it, the kind of uh, almost to a spirituality point of it, the relaxation point of it. Um, I think all those things are kind of combined when you talk about creativity and certainly the benefits of it, but, um, and the relaxation, of course, to it. Um, it yeah, it's just, it's, it's an, I've never been asked that question before. So that's a great question, but it really is a, uh, it's just, a, um, again, I think uh, kind of using using things in a different manner and putting things together in a different way than, than kind of we typically think about and that we typically do, quite frankly. So, yeah. I always tell people, and certainly not veterans and people that have risked their lives for my freedom but I or to protect me, but I tell others just to inspire them to make something because I feel like it lowers your stress and it puts you in flow. But I say, give give me an hour and make something and you'll just feel this joy and the sense of satisfaction that you made it yourself. And it's like no other feeling in the world. Yep. And after this conversation with you guys, it's like, take that feeling and put it on or give it to somebody who needs help, who wants that feeling, who needs that joy and that satisfaction. Yep. And that fills me up, it yep. really does. Where can we find more information? Where can we look up the stats? Where do we go? Websites, socials, all that good stuff. All that good stuff is basically www.healvets.org, H-E-A-L-V-E-T-S.org. You can always find links there as far as Instagram, we're active on YouTube, uh, Facebook, all the stuff there. And, uh, and, and for Instagram, follow us there and share your stories there too. Yeah, share your stories. I mean, it's really inspiring to see just how the craft therapy is making a difference in the lives of our veterans and active duty military members and also their families. And I want everyone to remember creativity isn't just about making something beautiful. It can be about healing, connecting and giving back. That's what we're talking about today. And if you're inspired at all by today's episode, 
consider how you can use your creativity and your time and your talents to make a positive impact on the community around you. HealVets.org. I'll say it again. HealVets.org. Go there, help out, donate, do what you can do. Say thank you. It is all good. Captain Joe McLean and Dr. Keith Stussy, thank you so much for joining us on Creative Living. Thank you, Jane, so much. Thank you, Jane. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and download the Creative Living Podcast with Jane Klaus. Live better creatively. For more inspiration, visit janeklaus.com. Thank you for listening.